This is the Swera Gustav, or in English, the heavy or great Gustav. And very, very heavy and great it was. It weighed 1,350 tons and could fire a seven ton shell to a range of 30 miles. Developed by Nazi Germany in the late 1930s, the heavy Gustav 800mm calibre monster cannon was explicitly designed as a siege artillery weapon to penetrate and decimate the super thick reinforced concrete fortifications of the French defensive facility known as the Maginot Line. Built by the leading German arms manufacturer Krupp AG and in fact named after the company CEO Gustav Krupp, the heavy Gustav railway gun stretched 155 feet in length, including its 106 foot long barrel. It required a team of thousands to dig embankments and lay railway tracks, and around three days and 250 people were needed to assemble the gigantic weapon. The infamous Führer, Adolf Hitler, was personally involved in the gun's commissioning. In fact, it was not until Hitler visited the Krupp company and inquired about the viability of such a theoretical weapon that things were finally set in motion and the colossal cannon was born. Quite ironically though, the heavy Gustav gun itself was never actually used in the fighting between the French and Germans, as the Nazis essentially invaded France via Belgium and therefore almost entirely circumvented the immensely expensive line of heavy French fortifications. Indeed, the brilliantly constructed yet completely underutilized Maginot line has since become a synonym for how the best laid plans can so often go badly awry. Then again, owing to the damage that Gustav would soon wreak upon an impressive system of Soviet fortifications, perhaps the allegedly impregnable Maginot line was best left untested. And so it was in June of 1942 and at the Eastern Front siege of Sevastopol that Gustav was called in and first used in combat. In spite of a massive conventional German aerial and artillery bombardment, the tenacious Soviets, safely hidden in their massive underground bunkers, had so far managed to hold the strategically critical port city of Sevastopol. It was therefore hoped by the German High Command that Gustav's imminent arrival would help break the stalemate and end the siege in their favour. Transported to the Crimea on a heavily customised 1.5 kilometre long 25 car train, Gustav was painstakingly positioned, assembled and secured by some 3,800 personnel. And when the world's largest ever gun was finally unleashed, it proved to be utterly devastating. Over a short four week period, Commencing on the 5th of June 1942, Gustav operated with clinical and overwhelming force. With a single seven ton concrete piercing shell reportedly penetrating more than 100 feet of earth before obliterating a crucial Soviet underground ammunitions store. By early July, 
Gustav had brought the siege to a decisive conclusion. With the Soviets surrendering and with the city of Sevastopol left lying in ruins. So while Gustav's effectiveness as the ultimate siege-breaking artillery piece was undeniable, it actually barely took any further part in the war, owing to the extraordinary inherent challenges in transporting it, as well as due to the limited opportunities available to a Nazi regime that would soon come under siege itself. Uncertainty and conjecture surround Gustav's fate, but it seems this phenomenal weapon, the likes of which the world had never before seen, was probably destroyed by the retreating German army so as to avoid it falling into the hands of the advancing Soviet Union. <laughs>